of man. May I have your attention, please? The show starts in ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go in. All my embracers. It's Monday night. Thanks for everybody that comes in every Monday night and supports the show. And for any of you newbies, thank you for coming in. And I just want to let you know that this is a channel that embraces the truth, your truth. And it's a safe place where we encourage the growth and healing. And we have those hard and necessary awkward conversations because they're necessary. We strive to have thought provoking dialogue, but remember always with respect. Please note that we do not disrespect each other and we do not just, we just have adult like conversations. So please act accordingly. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And definitely, definitely drop the cash app to support the channel because I'm flying this plane as we're flying it. We're building this plane as we're flying it. So, you know, it, need, it, need, it still needs a few notes and bolts. Anyway, I am Grace from Embrace the Grace. And you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, WhatsApp, and of course, YouTube. Okay. And I am going to bring up my co-host, Gary D me every Monday night, helping me sort out through these difficult and hard conversations. Gary, thank you for coming to the show tonight. Let everybody know who you are and where we can find you. Thank you, Grace, for having me. Um, uh, my name is Gary D. Uh, I am president of Boardwalk Global Media. We, are, we have a couple of podcasts that we do every week. Uh, one of the podcasts which I'm on is called The The Real Discussion, which comes on every Friday night from 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'm also president, uh, well, I'm also owner of ESI Global Group, an entertainment management and consulting company. And we currently have an art, uh, artist from Australia by the name of Baba T, who's doing, who's doing very well. And I'm just happy to be here with Grace every week, um, you know, to to have these real conversations because these real conversations are very very much needed. Um, you could find me on uh, Instagram. Uh, you could Google. You could Instagram on the Real Discussion and Boardwalk Global Media, and on Facebook, the Real Discussion and Boardwalk Global Media. Nice, nice. So how you been, Gary? How was your weekend? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, my weekend was cool. I got no complaints. Good. So, and thank you Gary, for popping in. Uh, thank you for popping in on our show over on, on, on Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, I, I like I was telling you, I was trying to stay awake. But Saturday nights is just not a good night for me. It's like crash and burn from the whole week. But I tried and I appreciate the shout out. Rock gave me a nice shout out. Absolutely, Rock absolutely. And it was good conversation, but I, I just couldn't stay up, you know. But when it's on Friday nights, you know, I'm available on Friday night. So I got you. I got, got you. Um, True, he just got home. He's going to get settled in and he's going to come up. Okay. So um, give him time his thing. But um, Harry. While I was doing my research last night, first of all, I couldn't believe just just how much there is to say about sexless mm -hmm. marriages. Yeah. Now, I knew that women hold out on sex on their marriage, you know, on their husbands. I've heard about it that people change after they get married and things change. But once you really start looking at the numbers and you see what it can actually do to a person you know this is what i'm hoping for that one people can realize just how detrimental the lack of sex and intimacy can do to marriage 
and how it can get to the psyche and the mental health of the spouse that you are holding out nookie on. But since everybody knows as this channel, I advocate for men. Okay, women been talking this shit for too long and men have been silent. And they've really been they've really been silent around the women because if you go to the barber shops, if you go to the locker rooms, if you go to the sports bar, the men are talking. But the fact is the women are not listening. And 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 they think they know it all. And they think they know men better than men themselves. And that's why I learn who better else to learn from? Who better else to learn about a man than from a man? You can't go to your friend girl and get advice about a man when you're a woman. You know, you you need to go to the the source. So, the fact remains is that there are a lot of sexless marriage. And again, let's talk about what sexless marriage is. It's a matrimonial union in which little or no sexual activity occurs between two spouses. The US National Health and Social Life in 1992 found that 2% of married respondent ages from 18 to 59. That was another surprising fact that millennials and zillennials are running into this. You would think that the younger generations, but it's crazy. It's the one it's the younger ones that are experiencing the lack of sex in their marriage. And they reported that no sexual intimacy has taken place in the past year. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, there's no sex taking place for a year. Mary, where do you do that at? Well, you <laughs> married to a person, wake up to a person every day, lay in a bed to a person every day and not have sex. See, to me this is foreign. Maybe because of the you know, I'm trying to I was trying to think last night, well, why wasn't I ever like this? Why am I not like this? I never thought of even holding out not on, on anybody that I was with. And I guess it really depends on the person and and it really does. It depends on the person and it depends on your libido. So th that's another thing we're going to talk about. But as I was doing my research, Gary, I was flabbergasted on the data that I was gathering. I mean, I've always heard of women holding out, um not putting out, putting our husband on punishment for for months and weeks, but I didn't realize that sometimes it's for years. And sometimes it would Gary, women would cut their husband off right after the honeymoon. Mhm. Mm the honeymoon. And the fact that y'all put up with this I'm I'm telling you it it is crazy. So I have I have um I call him her name is Ayura, I call her Lani. One of the first conversations that my significant other and I had was how important is sex in a relationship for you? Mm -hmm. Boom. Lani if, if I was having a contest of the top comment of the night, so far you're going to be in the running because this is something that Gary and I preach week in and week out you must have these conversations you can't find out 6 months in the marriage that you have a low libido and your spouse has a very high libido it's not going to work you're unequally yoked and if anybody hasn't told you sex and intimacy is a vital to a relationship to a marriage And I'm even going to prove it to you how it says it in the Bible that sex must be regular in a marriage. Yeah, I'm bringing in the Bible into this because mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what? A lot of y'all like to get married in the church, but don't act church like in your marriage. So we I'm talking to the Christians, the wanna be Christians, um the non-denominationals, the spiritual ones, whoever. <laughs> And again, I have to put out this disclaimer, Gary. I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm not a licensed psychiatrist, but I am an expert in life. Of everything that I've gone through in these 48 years of my journey, I've seen friends and family go, go through. And again, don't get offended of anything that we talk about here. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. 
If you're getting your feelings about something, that means we touched the nerve and you need to go look at yourself in the mirror and see how you can become a better version of yourself because that's what it's all about. Becoming better people, growing and healing. Right, Gary? Yep, yep. So let me ask you something. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about sexless marriages or even sexless relationship? It doesn't even well, have to be marriage because there's been people that have been together for years and they're not married, but they're together and they have sexless relationships. So how do you well, feel about that? Well, let me first say, I think that, you know, for people that's watching us, um, uh, I, I think what's important is that a lot of not only what we say, but even other pod, podcasters say, you know, we are real people talking about real life experiences, right? And I think that in my opinion, I, I think that in some cases that could come across better than being with a therapist, right? Because you're hearing real people having sharing yeah. their real life experiences and how they've dealt with cer um, certain ex experiences. Now, don't get me wrong. Therapists are great if you find the right one, right? Yeah. Um, so but, that's important. But with, right. But with that being said, um, you know, when you talk about sexless marriage and sexless relationships, um, you know, I, I like I don't understand like how that could really happen because as you and I've always talked about, like when you're in a relationship, you have to have the real conversation, right? And part of the real conversation is finding out if you and your partner is sexually compatible, right? Like if you're on a 10 and your partner is on a five when it comes to sexuality, that's probably not gonna work. Or vice versa. Um, if it's you're probably, it's not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna. But and and men more so. Men, we're very visual, right? We're very visual creatures. A, a lot of us are very sexual uh, creatures and stuff like that. So the idea we would like to have a partner that is uh, that that likes sex just as much as us. Um, and there are some women that are willing to do that. However, I think when it comes to marriage, what I've seen, um, and, and and I've spoken to, you know, I have quite a few married women friends. And over the years, I've heard some interesting stories like, wait a minute, you don't have sex with your husband anymore? You're not feeling him anymore? And you're sleeping in the same bed with him? Um, and I've heard so many things of like, just the feeling not there, the desire is not there. Um, and this is, and, and this is somebody that you're married to. Um, the other thing is that I think that, well, not, I shouldn't say, I, I think the other thing that happens, what I've also, uh, seen and research is that there's some women that, uh, during the, I guess the engagement stage, uh, They'll do all the nasty things that the fiance wants, right? But the moment that ring is on her finger after the wedding, it's a wrap. She not because she feels that she is arrived, right? And I've seen some even in some of these uh, groups where there have been women that have said, "Oh well, I'm married now. I don't got to do that." Like literally saying saying that. So you know it. You know, situations like that is is definitely a problem. But um, I just want to say that it's important to have the real conversation and the real sex conversation to find out if you and your partner is sexually compatible. Now, look, y'all may not be on the same level, but if y'all are open to growing together sexually, I think that's great, right? At least that's how it should be. Right, there are people that Absolutely. before they got married, they may not be on a, they may not have been on the same sexual level, but 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 they were able to grow in their the relationship. So now they're doing alternative sexual lifestyles together. I to me that works. But if you're going to be in a relationship or be in a marriage, and because your husband is upset, you're, you're mad at your husband 
and you cut them off for sex, not for a night or a day, a, a day or two. You're talking about weeks and months. And men, we really need sex. Let's be real. We really need sex. Oh, but yeah, not only that, once we get into it. <laughs> yeah, but not not only do we really need sex, we want to have sex with a woman that's really like really into it right now there's some guys they may just be happy with her just lying there but that doesn't work because i mean sex really is supposed to be about pleasure for both right and when you're in a relationship right and when you're in a relationship and you're talking and you're cutting your husband off from sex and the marriage like i don't understand how you could lay in the same bed every night night in not night out and not have sex, right? And look, bad as many people say and would agree, bad sex is worse than no sex. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so we got to do something here. All right, so let me, I got True Table on the, on the panel. Thank you for coming, young man. I really do appreciate you once again. It, it wasn't last minute, but you know, I hit, I hit you up. You know, especially after today, you was you was clowning today. You was clowning on the Peak Network. I, so <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody who you are and where we can find you. Uh, shout out to you, Grace and the panel. Uh, I'm True Table. I'm a YouTuber, uh, content creator, relationship space. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all the same name. Um, and yes, I was clowning today on the Lupit Network. That was my topic. I hold no punches for the chubby ones. No, no grades. No, no sympathy. If you're fat, you want to be fat. Like, so, yeah. I, I have, I have no hey, sympathy. I'm sorry. Hey, I, 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 and it's okay. I'm not <laughs> mad at you. you. You know, I'm a chubby one. I always will be. And always have been. No but doubt. As I've grown up and matured. You can't get mad at a man. Men have preferences. Just like I like butter pecan, you like chocolate. I can't get mad at you. I don't like short men. You don't like fat chicks. That should be okay. That you shouldn't get offended. And if I do get offended, then I need to get my big ass in the gym and do something about it, right? Just but most women, most women want to get it sugar coated and want to be like, oh, don't say that. That's harsh, man. Bitch, if you fat, you fat. Keep it moving. And if you yeah. don't like what that person's saying, then do something about it. I get it. But it was just funny because I, I, we've interacted. I know you and just, I could hear you saying it and it was funny. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> um, I love having True on the panel, guys, because he is of a younger generation. He is a different type of breed of man. And he is the kind of man that is, has his eyes open and is learning. And he is one of them that speaks up. He doesn't only just talk the talk in barbershops or in the locker room. He is out here putting it on YouTube and telling women like it is. And you can't fault him for that. He, you can't get mad at him. And that's why I enjoy him on my show because he gives a fresh perspective on things and he, and he does drop true gems on the table. I love it. So with that being said, True, what do you have to say? I, I know you've never been married yet. So mm. let's say sexless relationships for you, because I'm sure you've, ex well, I don't know. I don't know if you've experienced <laughs> that, you know, but how do it? What do you have to say about sexless relationships? I didn't, I didn't, I know, I heard, so I, I was actually shocked because I've been hearing that this is a thing. I've been hearing it um, through all the panels and stuff I've been on and, the content I watch, I think it's it's weird. I think it's um it's very strange. I'm not sure how it's occurring. Uh, I could assume based on how there has been um, a type of social. How would I put it? People seem to give relationships a, a bad rap. They make it seem like dating is when it's fun, it's fast, it's new, it's fresh, it's light. That's where you have your fun. Then when you get in a relationship, that's when you get serious. Like the relationship's serious. 
the dating part is like when it's all flair and all that. And I disagree. I think the way you're dating is should be the way your relationship exists. I actually, it's crazy. I did a TikTok earlier today yelling at the oh. men. Yeah, you set the tone. And I was saying that I was like, it's not her relationship. It's your relationship. If you're not getting laid, you're not having sex. There's something you're not doing because there's just no way in my mind that you can be a man involved in your relationship. And this woman doesn't want to rip your clothes off every chance she gets. You know, there has to be something that either you're not feeding the relationship. You're not nurturing the relationship. There's a block. Maybe a communication breakdown. Maybe you're not confident i hate to even say that but it's i've been hearing it a lot that confidence. No, you're right you're right you're right bro you're, you're right yeah so um i've just always kind of been of the mind that even in a relationship even if you're in marriage that woman should always understand that she's in constant competition with herself with the world because if you're able to land you know a man that you respect and value well guess what he probably could replace you like I, I I I don't even apologize for that because a lot of dudes have this like, well, I'm lucky because I have her. No, we're mutually blessed if we have each other. But I could replace you, sweetie. Like there's a whole bunch of you, but you have to really mm -hmm. have that mindset that there's always a um a, a limit, a barrier. As much as I love you, as much as I value you, I see a lot of men don't operate that way. They're always in servitude to the woman. And so therefore I can see how a woman will because what a lot of dudes don't get is women test you without ever telling you you're being tested. They watch. So very true. Yeah. They very watch true. your re repetition. They watch your habits. So if you if, if, a, if a week goes by, nothing happened, mind you, she didn't lose her job. She's not in a car accident, nothing. And she didn't give you no but there should be a conversation like how did you go seven days and I didn't get none? Like that's <laughs> not. So what women tend to do is they watch men. They hyper focus. Okay, all right, it's been three days. All right, it's been a week. Shoot, it's been three weeks. He ain't said nothing. That's even odd. If she really is concerned, she would be like, "Well, shoot, he ain't touching me. Like, what? What's going on?" But if she's okay with it, there's something wrong. And so then they tend to build their whole arsenal. Like, okay, I, he obviously doesn't need that from me. So, you know, he cool with just me being here, whatever it may be. So it's up to the man to actually keep that 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 fire under her ass and be like, nah, this is what I need. Like Gary said, this is what I need. If I'm not getting it, we got a problem. Cause you would not not feed, you would not not feed your man for a week. You would not not do that. So right. it's the same thing. Like, how you go a week? And we talking about life commitment? No, sweetie, you better. It should be regular. I should be telling you no, like I'm tired, like I'm exhausted, like get off me. But you know, I digress. But see, and you know, and you're, and you're and you're go ahead, Gary. No, go ahead. The, the the um the the in interesting thing is that there's so being that man, we're obviously very very sexual, and for those lucky ones who do get a lady that enjoys sex. You know, um, and they, you, there are some women who will do and enjoy doing what her man likes, you know, whether it's dressing in the lingerie and the heels and, you know, all the stuff that goes with that. You know, she enjoys pleasing him and doing all these things for him because uh, um, it makes her feel good, but she knows it makes him feel, 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 feel good and she's happy she's happy doing it right she you know i always like to say you want to have your lady happy shopping for lingerie right oh my god i want to buy this. i'm going to buy this because i know how he's going to react right he's going to love it and stuff like that but on the other end you get some women that's like oh i don't need to do that if he doesn't want if he don't like me like this then that's too bad that's so if crazy. So, that mindset right. Here right, but but when crazy. you mix that with but when you mix that with not even want to do none of the sexy stuff, like then you wonder why he's gonna go out, right? Because oh, we're gonna he, talk about that because he'll because step out. Not only he, he'll no? step out and find a woman and get a woman that'll happily do right the sexy stuff that he likes. She's not even gonna complain. She's not gonna bitch and. 
I hate to say it like that, but that's what happens. Yep. And Grace said, hey, sis, she's in the room. Thank you for coming, my dear, or my regular. And she said, damn, damn it, True. He knows our secrets. I'm telling you, this is a very intuitive young man. You could tell that he reads a lot. You could tell that he observes a lot. And you could tell that he has those conversations. And I mean, I've never met True personally, but just by having conversation, you can tell the mind, this is not a man to be fucked with. And he will replace you in a heartbeat. And, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm letting y'all know, y'all know right now. So, so if you're gonna step out, you better come with the truth. So Lonnie says, everybody just wants to gain something, but never wants to maintain what they have. Like what are your plan? How do you expect it to keep it alive? Exactly. Okay, and then in grace, it goes from enjoyment as a couple to a tool used for leverage, quick as fuck. And yes, okay. Now you and Lonnie on the run in the running for the best comment of the night. I like that one. That's second. And then hi Kimberly, how are you, my dear? Thank you for coming. Don't forget to press the like the like button. So what I'm about to say, I mean, a lot of women are not gonna lie, but we all know that this channel is for advocating for men. There's enough hyenas out there advocating for women and giving out misinformation. And my biggest um, push for this is because I have a son. I'm a mom, I'm a boy mom <laughs> all the way. So a lot of women are not going to like what I'm about to say. It is your duty as a wife to give up that ass. It is your duty. And it <laughs> says it. And why do I say this? Because the Bible tells me so. Yeah, I'm not trying to turn this show religious or anything, but a lot of y'all spend thousands of dollars buying the white dress, knowing y'all asses ain't no virgins. And y'all wanna get married at a church in front of a, a pastor or a priest or a bishop, you want to do, you want to have the wedding, you want to have the fun, but a lot of women nowadays, gentlemen, don't want to put the work in for a marriage. And as a wife, again, I am going to repeat that, embrace this. It is your duty as a wife to give up that ass. I mean, me, I might stop cooking for you, I might not wash your clothes. I might not do regular things that I know you like, but I'm nah, not that. Cause I'm hurting myself too. But a lot of women don't look at it. And like, and like Grace said, they use it, they use it as a weapon. And you know what? Again, what I keep telling y'all men, take your spot at the head of the table and stop sitting on the sidelines. If your woman ain't giving you no butt, then you know what? Y'all need to change y'all behavior and you'll see how quick, we'll see how quick they'll change. So then, Let's hey, see. Trey, how you doing? Oh, oh, look at you, you coming up in here. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to press the like button. I appreciate your support. And then Grace said, I can see Grace telling her future daughter-in-law to get down through there and embarrass the hell out of her boy. Oh yeah, yeah, and I tell my son all the time, don't try to make me happy. Don't try to make, do the right right for society if like the stripper type of chick then that's who the fuck you marry don't marry the church girl and wish you marry the stripper girl and now you're having that church girl doing tricks on the ceiling fan and she's not going to do it because that's not who she is okay you're the one that deal with your wife you're the one that's got to get married and deal with her and take care of my grandbabies so you're absolutely you're absolutely right grace i I saw Mary who you do back. And then and um Grace said, yeah, but duty is not the best used word because doing such for duty and not just don't hit the same, you dig? I hear you, Grace, but I got that word of the Bible. It is our duty as a wife, just like we're supposed to cook, to clean, we're supposed to nurture our house, we're supposed to take care of our kids we're supposed to take care of our husband's penis. I'm gonna put it out there just like that. We not sugarcoating nothing. Full stomach, <laughs> empty sacks. 
<laughs> it's very simple, guys. What did Kevin Samuels? What did Kevin Samuels used to say? Sandwich, sex, and silence. It's very simple. Men are physical. <laughs> men are physical creatures. Men are visual creatures. I didn't. One time, back in the days when I had a limousine company, I was thinking of opening up a strip club. And I was actually doing research and going to different strip clubs, seeing the kind of clientele that goes into strip clubs. And guys, you'd be amazed that most of them are all married. And why? Because they're not getting what they want at home. They mm -hmm. are spending your hard earned money to a complete stranger when you could be on that fucking pole at home and dressing sexy and doing What's and, and all We'll see, and there's, there's, I, um, cute. Well, see, there's some women that, you know, feel that, uh, again, they don't need to do that. But I've, you no, know, I've, I've known quite a few strippers and I've had friends that own strip, strip, strip clubs. And the, and the single men that come in there to spend money because the girl on the pole, that's the fantasy girl, right? And now, if I, I, from what I've seen is if I guess the wifey would maybe do maybe a little bit, he probably wouldn't even be there, but wifey's not doing that. And, 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 uh, so he's going to go to the club and spend, you know, and, and, and enjoy himself. And then when he comes home, he's not thinking of his wife, he's going to go to sleep. Right. So, and that shouldn't be the case. I, I think that, you want to be able to have a relationship where one, at least I feel, you go to a strip club, you want to be able to bring your wife with with you. Both of y'all enjoy, right? And I'll tell you, for the couples that I've spoken to about that, after they go to the strip club and they get all riled up, they go home and have some amazing sex, right? But some women aren't like that. Thank you. That's supposed to be a turn on. That's supposed to be a turn on, Jared, but hold it's on so. A minute. I got yeah. I got Jay from the JVJ Network who showed up. Jay, how you doing, and everybody? You are and where are you? Welcome. What's up, girl? Can you hear me? You went, you went in and out a little bit, but uh, what's up? Oh Lord, well, when are... what's up? Not much. We're what's... talking about sexless marriages, relationships, whatever. The fact. It's a problem. That's what we're talking about tonight. And, and um, Lonnie said, happy spouses, happy houses. Exactly. Ain't no happy wife, happy life. When I hear a man say that, simp, like, comment to me, I lose all respect for that man. I really do. Because I'm even taking it to the next level, Lonnie. Happy king, happy kingdom. Okay, we even take, we even take, we even going harder on that because you know what? <laughs> if he ain't happy, he gonna be happy because he gonna go out and do his thing, and then you not gonna be happy. The kids are gonna get fucked up. The money's gonna run low. So at the end of the day, again, and what I was saying, I got to say about that. Um, hold on a second. Grace said, um, hey man, church girls can get down through. Hold on, it's not clicking. Give me just a second. That's what she BJ said. Jay comes on the show and everything starts getting messed up. Hold on a second, because I'm, I'm they're piling up now. Give me just a second. No, I bring the here. With me. Huh? Well, Grace is here every Monday night, sir. You just not here, but you know we ain't gonna talk about that. You know we'll, we'll leave that we'll leave that alone. <laughs> Who brought the army? <laughs> what army, Grace? Grace is here every day, with or without you. It's any girl a full anyway, army? Let's, I sent let's over get back, here. Let's she, get back to this. she covered the western flank by herself. That's why I sent her. You should cover the east. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so let, let me get to what I, I was talking about. Yes, it's our duty as a wife. And I say this because the Bible tells us so. Duties of spouses, spouses. I'm not just saying the wife. The duties of spouses are to love, support, cherish, and respect each other. And yes, making each other feel hot and spicy and happy does generally include sexual obligation. However, like Gary was saying before, there is no one size fits all approach to duties in marriage. I feel that nowadays, marriage should be customized to the couple, but you gotta have God's hand in it. No matter how you customize it, once you have God in it, a good start. What do you have to say about that? I got a question. Gary? Go ahead. Can you say that again? Yeah, Grace, you went in and out. He said he, he has a question. That. Nah, but he, uh, Gary, he couldn't understand what you said. You was yeah, I didn't hear what you out. said. Yeah. I cleaned my computer on stage, so I did what no, I was no, supposed just, to just do. Say it, just say it again. Just say it again. So um, just hear you. The thing is, are to love, support, cherish and respect each other and yes make each other feel hot spicy and happy does general sexual obligations however there is no one size fits sexual duties in marriage and i feel that now because there's so many different contributing factors and people have so many different fetishes that marriage and sexual relationships should be customized to the couple as long as Absolutely. you got into it. I mean, so, you, well, you, you, you have, have to say to, about that. I mean, listen, you, you have to have, as I always say, the real conversation, right? And part of that conversation is talking about sex and, and finding out what are your likes and dislikes? What are you into? What are you not into? What are your fetishes? What are your kinks? Um, and it really has to be a seriously open conversation um, because you don't want, you may have certain fetish and kinks that maybe you don't want to tell your partner about because they may think, oh my God, it's nasty or what have you um, or, or vice versa. But still you have to, if there are certain things that get you off that you need, then you need to tell your partner, exactly. especially, especially if you're married to this person and it's death to us part, right? I mean, so, but I, I think that a lot of people, I should say, a lot of couples, they're not having that kind of conversation, right? So they're just expecting, right? Their partner to just automatically go with whatever they're doing and I don't believe that's the appropriate way. I mean, it needs to be, a, you're a team, you're a unit. So it's a discussion that you have to have. It's a conversation that you have to have to find out what it is that gets the both of you off. Now, if you, if y'all can agree on that and that works for the both of you, and if there's other things that y'all want to mutually explore, then yeah, then don't, then, then go, then go and do that. But most, but most couples, they don't do that. They just expect that, you know, the partner is just going to go, go along with however th they are. And it, and, and you have to have the conversation you have to have, because it makes it so much, it makes it so much easier. Right. And let me also say, say, say this. I think that for the men, you have to be able to talk to her and get in her head, right? You know, every woman have that, for lack of a better word, slut inside of her. So you got to be able to get in her head and unlock that. Most men can't do that and don't know how to do that. You're right. You're absolutely right. So what, what do you have to say, um, True, about what... What I said as far as a duty and an obligation to your man. Um, 
I'm kind of going to double down on what Gary was saying because he's 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 right. I was actually going to say that. So that's crazy. We're in alignment that, yeah, <laughs> most, you know, most men have to unlock, you know, uh, that particular part of their woman. You're not necessarily taught that, but, you know, through experience, it should come up. You know, if you're engaging with women enough, you'll start to kind of grab those skills. I'll also say that I think that one of the disparities is that marriages are actually supposed to be influencing single people, but in turn, it's actually opposite. Um, mm -hmm. Single people influence married couples. And then a lot of times, especially modern day, most people who are getting married are not virgins. They're not people without past experiences. I don't personally believe you can bring your dating um, past, your, your dating history into a marriage because they function very differently. Um, but most people don't go through that reprogramming to understand that this is this is this is permanent and, and to nurture it is necessary because in order to do so, uh, I, it's going to require me to invest constantly. There's no it's not supposed to break up. You're not supposed to be you know getting lost in it, but it is an obligation. And I know people don't like to look at it like that, that you are required to show up as your best self. But it is a duty based thing. It is a committed based thing. Um, if you want it to work overwhelmingly. Yeah, I agree. So, I digress. Absolutely. And Jay, what do you, what do you have to say about what I said um, as far as a duty and obligation to each man? But because you guys know over here, I, sp I speak, I I mostly speak to the men, but this is for the men and the women. What do you feel about that, Jay? You would know better than anybody. Like, mm -hmm. why, here, here, I, I think you know how I view the situation better than anybody that's around right now. Well, um, I know, but my viewers don't know. All right. Well, look, y'all, relationships are compromised. Life is a compromise. If you don't compromise on certain things, you're not going to get what you want. Sometimes you got to do some things that you don't want to do to get to what to get to what you want. Like I, I tell I tell men all the time, they need to have the mindset of I'm doing what I got to do. So eventually I can get to one day of doing what I want to do. That's compromise. And a lot of, oh, no, no, we got some pushback. I'm ready to hear it. Go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear the pushback first before I go in first. Nah, I, I want to let you finish cooking. You know? it go ahead. I'm not going to do it. I want to hear the pushback. Um. Okay, uh, the word compromise is one of those very broad blanketed statements, and I do hear it. I personally, I personally stand on the narrative that a man should never compromise, absolutely under no circumstances. And what I mean by that is that it is a, his job to structure what he is going to experience in life. There's a big difference between understanding that you got to crawl before you walk. But when you tell a man he has to compromise, in most cases, they don't know how that looks. And then when you're dealing with a woman, women tend to know how to manipulate compromise to yeah. stretch it. To Can you say that? It. Say that for the people way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, women tend to know how to take that word and stretch it to their benefit. And then in most cases, most men overwhelmingly are going to perform to her best liking. I have found that when you do not compromise your standard, your standard as a man should be exceptionally high for yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to argue with you over if we're having Chinese or Italian. That's not true compromise. But compromise is when you start to, you know, change your life in a direction that is below your standard, below your output, below your, you know, religious beliefs, if that's what it is. Um, and you see a lot of men do this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm saying you think that's what compromise is? Um, I think that if it's gonna if it's gonna derail your progress as a man, yeah, I think that's compromise. Well, who who brought in derail your progress? Um, well, okay, I'll ask you like this: When you okay, maybe this is better. When you say compromise, what it is? What is it that you're referring to? Because you said a man has to do what he has to do, and so he can do what he wants to do. I hey, uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Uh, I think I think you went to the like the the worst in the worst negatives when it comes to compromise. Like compromise is like, hey, look, baby, where you want to eat at? I don't know. And you tell her, look, we gonna go and grab some at McDonald's. We gonna head back to the house. Oh, well, baby, I I, I, I want to get Wendy's. You compromise and you go to Wendy's. 
I'm not yeah. thinking about the extremes because every man has to stand on his own square. And he has to lead his situation. But in relationships, you have to compromise on everything to a certain extent. A certain extent. Because a man has to be a man. So there's some things it's like, hey, look, you ain't with it, you can get your ass the hell on. And I say it to a lot of women. And there's some things that women could be like, look, he can't do this for me. I can't deal with it. And I be telling them, look, boo boo, go on about your path, go on about your business, go on do what you got to do. But we have to compromise in relationships. We compromise when it comes to work. We pretty much we compromise in every aspect of our lives. So well, when it comes to relationships, it should be more important, right? So true. Well, that's why I think I think we are agreeing. The energy um, that I'm yeah. getting. Hey, Greg. Go ahead, Grace. Energy that you get. The energy that I'm getting is that you're putting out there. It's my way or the highway. Is that true? Am I? Am mm. I? It's. It, it, am I reading you correctly? No, I, I know that can true. be that can be interpreted that way. Um, I'm putting out the energy that is the man's responsibility. That's to, why I asked. Uh, I don't assume. Yeah, yeah it's the man's so responsibility. Don't, don't, don't back down on that, man. Hell no, nah, tell it. No, nah, no, nah, it is my way to highway. Look, motherfucker, I will <laughs> possibly compromise with you on shit, but ultimately, it is my way to highway. I'm and, not and, joining your team. You joining mine. In Jay's, in Jay's, in ter- yes, in Jay's delivery, yes, Ooh, that's exactly. That's what you talked about today, true. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying Absolutely. to me. So his and example, let- his example of food to me is not compromise. That, that's that's not a life altering thing. Compromise to me is when I have to now change what I stand for, my standard, my pillar, my belief system. Food is not ultimately going to change or derail my my growth in this relationship. So we, like you said, you want some wings, get the wings. That's not a relationship thing. But when it comes to how we're going to raise our children, when it comes to how we're going to spend, you know, our finances, you know, do we loan money to family members, uh, things of that nature? That's why I'm saying compromise for a man should just not be a thing. Because I think it's, you went to the extreme. Um, I don't know. I'm no, saying I, I, don't, I, I like I, I I have to agree with you. I don't think that's the extreme because he thinks because I mean I do agree that when it comes to you know life changing things and Chu said something earlier with some of those life changing things and you compromise women. Some women know how to manipulate that. Yeah. They, they, right? They know, they know who they messing with. They know. How, mm-hmm. All right. And and yeah, I agree he, with him a million. Got, I agree with him a million percent on that. I I feel I feel both of y'all on what y'all saying because it makes a hundred percent sense. It makes a hundred percent sense. But a man, man to man, I think we got three men on the panel right now. We know different levels of compromise. We're talking about the dudes that can't think for themselves and let women nip- manipulate them. And that's why I that's why I try not to compromise. I ain't speaking for them niggas, man. Them niggas get licked. I don't care. Mm-hmm. They can get licked all goddamn day. That's their problem. That's their problem. They can deal with it. I can try to coach you and, and teach Jay, you. How to as a woman. Yeah. As a woman. And I'm on the panel. I like okay if i was to ever date trey i uh, true i already know that he's the type of man play game with and i'm, I'm either i have to gonna accept it or reject it because he's he's not to deal with it then as a woman i also know who i can toy with and who i can manipulate and you're absolutely My right. exact point it's really See? if a woman if a if a woman wants a certain type of she wants that alpha man so she's gonna have to walk a straight line she knows that she's gonna have to go with him again this is the easiest concept you're either gonna accept it or reject it but you can't accept it and then complain and talk shit and not want to deal with it and that's the energy of trade and, and as young as you are Damn, Grace. That's where a head of house holes and leaders come in. 
That, so Grace, um, I, I, I got I, um, I Grace here. Saying. She says the Bible states. My bad, go Grace. Go I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just reading um, Grace's comment saying the Bible stands that neither husband nor wife are to hold their to one another unless there is an agreement. You, you see, you're, you're not supposed to hold out on each other. And, and, not, and yeah, sex, but you're really not supposed to hold out on anything with the person that you're married, on communication, on money, on just anything because if this is the person that you committed your life to your body to my body mind and soul stop playing the game should end once you get married should, that's when yeah. the real you didn't got the title <laughs> now you gotta fulfill the job description how are you gonna become ceo of a company you shit you think you're gonna be ceo for long so how are you gonna get the ring Get the house, get the car, get the husband that you don't have to cook and clean and take care of your husband. I mean, I don't, I don't get the mindset of the modern woman. You, you want to be strong and independent, but then you want that man to pay all your bills. I mean, you cannot have both sides of the fence. It's either you're going to be with a modern man and be a modern woman, or you're going to be traditional and be with somebody like, like true and, and be like, yo. This is what you got to do. This is how it goes. And again, I'm going to use it. It's very simple concept. You're either going to accept it or you're going to reject it. And, and that's where Gary's concept comes in, putting it on the table, having the necessary conversations. I'm not trying to find out that my husband two years in has a libido of six when my shit is off the chain at 22. That conversation should have been happened before we got married. How we spend our question. money should happen before we get married. Yes. I got a question. All right. With that being said, Ask away. I think I think I Wait. think you made a great point. I think you made a great point, Grace. A lot of the conversations that which we one need to be had, a lot of the conversations that we need to be had between male and female are not had. And I think we all agree on that. But when it really comes down to it, and it's not and they're had too late paid. if they're had. Yeah. <laughs> but the but the but does the but I'm not trying to disregard everything that came before because you know to say but everything before but didn't matter. Every that, that all matters. We are not having the conversations and relationships beforehand before we get deep into it. But there is still gonna be compromise, right? In that relationship. I guess I just I, yes, I think I that it agree. I think that it has to be communicated, you know, very precise. Compromise exists in life, obviously. I mean, you have things like a yield sign. You know, if you go through a yield sign, you're not always going to be the one who's going to force your way through. So you're always going to have to be adjusting. But I think the word compromise has been weaponized um, from the you know woman demographic to manipulate most men because most men by nature are not hard on their standards. They don't ha half the time know what their standards are because they, you know, are yeah, dealing with mm -hmm. Go ahead. Listen. Well, yeah, they're, 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 they're not accustomed to even knowing that it's okay to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm not going to do. This is what I'm going to allow you to do. This is what I'm not going to allow you to do. Yeah, they so was Look, I, I could say like in my in in my experience and for the women that I've dealt with, um, there have been I always get told my standards are very high. I've been told that uh, oh well, because of I guess the boyfriend that they're dealing with or what have you is oh I could never pull that shit with you right like you got to be that guy, you have to be that guy to where the to where the women that you're dealing with they know not only how high your standards are, but know that who like they can't pull certain shit with you. Because women, again, they know that they could pull certain shit with certain guys, right? They know, like, your woman has to be the one when she goes out with her girlfriend and all her girlfriends is talking about, oh, my man let me do this, my man let me do that. Your girl has to be the one that would be like, my man don't tolerate that shit. You want to know something funny, Gary? What's me up? And Grace, me and Grayson talked about this 
Because uh, me and Grace have been conversating for a while. She a day one. Um... We try to figure out the root cause, the root problem of this situation between men and women. And we both agree. The problem is men. And the reason that the problem is men is because men, we got a lot of pussies walking around here. Got a shit ton of pussies. Like, look, the way I operate, the way I operate, and I ain't telling everybody else to do it, but uh, you can either get on the train or you can get the fuck off. You pick one. I got a saying. I'm about to put it on t-shirts. Grace, you were talking about merch for a long time. I'm going to put it on the shirt. Everybody not going to make the boat. Mm-hmm. I know I just said train, but now we're going to boats. We're going to switch mm-hmm. it up. Next next is going to be a plane. I don't care. Everybody not going to make the boat. Like, look, you can get with it or you can get lost. Like, any other female, a lot of dudes have a mindset of scarcity. Like, they can't find a girl. They don't even understand there are more women, literally, a whole billion more women mm-hmm. than there are men. I have a mindset of, uh, uh, well, hell, I don't have a mindset of scarcity, but I have Next. a mindset of abundance. There's a there's an abundance of women. If one ain't willing to do it, the next one will. And if I'm going to be the one that's, I got all the pressure on me of being the provider, being the protector, being the guy that has to make shit happen. Motherfucker, look, I'll compromise with you on some things. But at the end of the day, I'll run this ship. I'm the captain. I'm the captain. Who's the captain? And that's why I say, like, I'm I'm willing to compromise. That's why I came in with the compromise shit in the beginning. Like, baby, you want to do this? Okay, look, fuck it. I'll do it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. But at the end of the day, if it comes down to serious decisions, and I think that's what Truth was getting at, serious decisions, the buck stops here. You my vice president. I'm the president. Who the president? I'm the president. I'm going to make that last call. But that that's kind of where I land on it. That's kind of where I land. Like but I you think, can you I can think, talk to, you can talk to me and a and a brother like Gary because we're aligned. That's the reason yeah. why I try to keep it very black and white binary is because men, a lot of them are trying to grow to where we've already arrived. So when yeah. they hear compromise well they've heard that already so in their mind it's like well this just means that whatever she wants to create in my world in my relationship is allowed because i'm supposed to compromise makes the relationship work no that's think, not go ahead sorry, Gary. i i think that I, I i in my opinion i think a better word would be ag- agreement right because you know you're talking to your lady and and there's certain things that you know y'all can ag- you can agree on, right? And I think that should have, that, in my opinion, it sounds better, right? Um, compromise, you know, it, it, it definitely, it, it, it has a sort of, well, okay, I gotta give up something. And I think when you come to an agreement, I think it's more of a mutual understanding, this is what it is, right? Get it. Like we do that. That's the funny thing about it. We do that every day in every aspect of our lives. We compromise every day. The yeah, problem is, think- is a disrespect when it comes to like here. There's a not here, not disrespect, but there's a what's that word where you just you just don't want to do it. And he's like, oh, I don't want to do that shit. What's that word? What's the word for that one? Reluctant a, resistance. That's- yeah, yeah, we we'll figure it out later. But <laughs> there's a uh, you, you you know you don't want to do it, but you do it to make yeah happy. yeah like there's a you know, like you're begrudged or something like you feel some type of way about doing it. We really catch that a lot when it comes to relationships and doing it for the person that actually is gonna be there for you. But we'll do it for people that don't give a fuck about you every damn day. Wake up at seven o'clock, go work for a boss that ain't gonna care if your kid's sick. We're gonna do it every day when it comes to go make sure that we're at the PTA meeting to make sure that the teacher's teaching our kids the right shit. We don't give a fuck about that hoe. And you know that hoe don't give a fuck about you. But when it comes to the person that's really supposed to lay their life down, if somebody busts in that front door, somebody supposed to make sure that these bills are paid for or flip it to the women's shit. The woman that's supposed to make sure your kids are raised the right way. 
the woman that's supposed to make sure you got something to eat in your stomach every night. We bullshit that. We be like, <laughs> it's like, it's like whatever. And it's like, come on, man. Like for real, we won't compromise for the people You're that are right. really going to be here to the right. day we die. But we'll compromise for people that really are only here using us for slave labor. If you really want to get down to it, it's slave labor. Come in here and make me some money and I'll give you some penance. That's that's crazy how our relationships have gotten, but this it's socially engineered. It's but some people engineered. don't know. Some people don't understand. Well, I do agree that it's you know there's there's you know a lot of social engineering going on, and that could be a whole different show show topic. But you know it's you know people have to understand their value, and yeah. a lot of people don't understand their value because once you start to understand your value, there's shit that you're not going to tolerate. And there's, there's shit that you won't especially do. Especially men, Harry. Right. So look, look yeah, I, I do want to say this because I hear that value shit a lot. Your value is what you produce. And a lot of people try to act like they're more valuable than what they produce. Your value is what you produce. Whatever the market tells you, your value that, that's your value. And a lot of people be talking about, I know I'm more, I'm worth more than this. And I, I no, nah, bitch, no, you're not. Oh, you selling pussy in the projects? Like you know, I'm more valuable than that. Now, now catch catch me on Friday when you. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest, Gary. I ain't trying to be mean, but a lot of people saying I know I'm more valuable than this, and I'm like, no, you not. Well, some people listen. Some people have a delusional mentality. Okay, so let's That's be clear. The majority let's, of the population. Let's be clear about that. Some people have a delusional mentality, and you know, and you get. A lot of these quote unquote independent women that's talking about they know their worth and this, that, the other. If you know you, if you knew your worth, you wouldn't be putting up with half the bullshit or the majority of the bullshit that you've been putting up with and still doing it and try to hide behind that. So come on, let's 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 be real here. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, look, 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 we got a lot of people. Has a question. She said I. Say what, she said, I, the question for the guys, I've heard that men prefer their wife to initiate, but what about get turned on by being sought by their man? Which, which comment did you read? Can you okay, what? That? No, Hold on. Which comment did you read it? I can't see it. Can you read that? Okay, let me go look. Let me go look. Hold on. Let me go I look. Click, click on the right one. I can't see. I see. I've heard. I it's it's on the screen. Oh, uh, I have. I've a heard question. that men prefer their wife to initiate. What? Go ahead. Oh, read. Okay. Go ahead. Read it, Jake. No, 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 no. I, I look. I, I ain't know that you jumped into it. I ain't know you jumped in the line. I, I, I'm tripping. Go ahead. It says, "I have a question for the guys." So I've heard that men prefer their wife to initiate. But what about women that get turned on by being sought by their men? Well, see, okay, again, conversation, right? Conversation, the discussion, right? Because if 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 the man feels like he likes his wife or his lady to be the one that goes after him or wants to or initiates sex then that's something that needs to be talked about, right? That needs to be discussed. If she likes the, you know, if she likes him to to uh, dominate her and be the ones to, 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 to start it, she needs to talk about that. Now, I think that a lot of that doesn't happen because there's certain things that I think women just expect, right? But we're in an age where you have to really, again, and I know I sound like a broken record, have that conversation, right? When it, even when it comes to sex, on what do you like? What do you don't like? What are the actions? What turns you on? What don't turn you on? You know, all those, and, and even before that conversation happens, I'm sure y'all are having sex all already. So you need to really, find out what works for each of you. So as you grow in your sexuality or your sexual journey, then it, it, it shouldn't be a problem. But again, it goes back to having the conversation, the real conversation. Yes. And that has, yeah. and you have to have the real sex conversation, which the majority of these people don't do. 
Gary, you gotta stop the cap. The question was. But Gary, why don't I look at the switch? What, what about? Well, hold on, Jay. What about the motherfuckers that bait and switch? They do everything right at the beginning. They do it. They give you shit. They fuck you good. They do everything right. And then as soon as y'all in a relationship or things get serious, things taper off, the same things you do to get a person, you're not doing to keep them. What do you do? What do you do in that I think situation? That, so I, here's my, here is my, here's my personal take on that. I think I think that the bait and switch, I think that there, if you don't rush into anything and you let it, you let it take its time, you know, they say you give people, you know, some people maybe six months or eight months and you just watch how they op operate. And I think that there are a lot of red flags that do come up that people don't want to see or they just ignore, right? I, and I and so when they get into the relationship, um, they feel that it's all good and nice. And then here, here it is, maybe a year later, he or she does the bait and switch. And it's like, no, those qualities were already there. You just didn't see it or you just didn't pick pick it up. Yeah, feel like you weren't observant of, of it. Yeah, during the do the you know, during maybe the talking part or getting to know each other, y'all fucking really well and should. That's clouding your that's clouding your memory. That's clouding your judgment, right? But that's you really have question. to pay attention to how people act, how they respond, what they say, what they don't say. That you know, as these question. things progress. Now, women being question. more, um, they're being more emotional than men. They, you know, they tend to get a little bit more attached when the sex is great and stuff like that. And there are men that's gonna manipulate that to 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 their advantage. Gary and Grace, y'all know y'all just got a red dot on y'all because that was a trick question. That wasn't no trick trick question. Yeah, it is because when have you ever noticed that women have majority? We got a red dot. There? Read it, read it again. Read it again, Grace. Click on it again. Read it again. Which one? The the one that Grace sent. I have a question for this, the guys. The one the one I have up. Yeah, I have a question for okay, the guys. Read on. it again. I want y'all to see how that was a trick question. Go ahead. It Gary, says here, read. I have a question for the guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Gary. Read it. Coming, read Gary. It, I don't have it in front of you. Okay, let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, wait a second. Let's see. That's a certified trick question. But I listen to many guys talking here of theme with married men want to, okay, no. I don't, yeah, I don't got it on my screen here. I'll read it out loud. You ready? All right. Okay, I'll, go ahead. I have a question for the guys. Mm -hmm. So I've heard. So I've heard that men prefer women. Well, well, yeah, my bad. I've heard that men prefer their wife to initiate. But what about women that get turned on by being sought by their men? And you don't get the trick in that. Tell me, because I believe I, 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 I addressed that. But go. But you're welcome to to give your perspective on that. Who normally initiates anything between men and women? Who normally the man or the the man does it most of the time. So read the back end of that question. Yeah, but still, but there are we talk there about are, no, but there are people. No, there there are. It, to, to Grace's question, there are women who want to be sought out. You know, there are women who who also. So you have men I that figure this shit out. I no, 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 out. no. You you have men that obviously most men initiate, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And now you also have men who do like that for a woman to initiate to them also, right? That would be all men. That would be all men. 
right? Right. So, so I mean, so so when I answered that, yeah, I I, I believe I addressed it on on both ends. I mean, am I missing something? Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Because I'm trying. Okay. You, you said it's a. Tr- it out, you said it's a. Okay. You said it's a trick question, and I'm it trying is. to. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out where is the trick. I mean, you, right, yeah, or, I'm, or maybe I'm, I'm missing again. something. Yeah, I'll, I'll read again. I'll read again, and I'll tell you what the trick was. Uh, men are tired. Oh, hold on. No, that's the wrong one, Grace. Go back to the old one. Go back to the other one. Okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah, the other one. We still on this one, guys. We still on this one. <laughs> Great Grace, you know, Grace be fucking with people, and I like it. I like because I call it. She said, "I have a question for the guys." So I've heard. Catch it right. I've heard mm-hmm. that men prefer their wife to initiate. Keyword wife. But what about women that get turned on by being sought by their men? We know that majority of men pursue women, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So that automatically puts the women that want to be sought in the minority, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm just waiting on the guys to say yes. I'm waiting on the guys to say yes. Majority of women are in the minority when it comes to pursuing anything when it comes to a man. Okay, okay. A very small minority of women pursue men. The trick is that most men pursue women. Y'all get that? Yeah, that's so Ooh, that is. but okay, I hear that's I hear what you're saying. It was a trick question. It made you sit around and try to qualify yourself for what a man should do. Men are already doing that. That was the trick. Okay, all right. Nobody get like, well, no, nah, I mean, a man should because do this, a man should do that. They already doing it. <laughs> they already doing it. Well, I think obviously, oh, well, I, I see, you know, I see men what you're want talking. Women initiate more. But see, I see all what you're talking. Women to do that. We want y'all to have what's that word? Reciprocity. We want reciprocity from our women, but we yep. know that y'all not going to give it. Reciprocation. Because women are entitled to women are entitled to certain behaviors, certain habits, and men know what they're going to get. Well, see, here's they a okay. want that, but they know they're not going to get it. So, oh. all right. So, to that to the question that was asked, so from a sexual stamp standpoint, you have men that you know, there, there are men who, who would like their wife or their woman to initiate sex, right? Be the uh, one to initiate, not necessarily be dominant, but want to be to in, in, initiate. Um, you also have on the other other end, women who, who like their man to initiate, like, you know, if she's in the kitchen washing dishes and he comes and sort of grabs her and bends her over or or she's cleaning up and he comes and grabs and does something right so there's women that want a man that's going to do that majority of women yeah i just can't believe that this is really a, really an issue like that this is this no, is a no, I, thought it was an instant, <laughs> I thought it was an instant question because it, it was like it is it is true well, no, not, not so much the question, just the the overall, you know, exchange is is, is like sex to me should be the easiest thing between two parties that, that are in nothing, a relationship. Nothing, nothing in here. Exactly. To, no, nothing in here referred to sex. No, no, no. I know that's based on what Grace's question was, but I'm saying the topic as a whole, like sexist relationships, sexist marriages, is like how is this something that's occurring at at, at a large rate? It's, it's, oh, just, it's happening a lot. Man. It's happening a lot, man. And Baffling, you, like, you like wow. And then Grace, Grace again came back and Grace came back and said, "Men are tired of lazy, entitled women. Women are tired of lazy, entitled men. Get your but look at the men that a lot of them are choosing. Think about the other person. 
instead of yourself, problem solved. But I mean, Grace, look, I agree with your con with your statement. Look, look, a lot of dudes. I, I hey, yo, her statement is one hundred percent correct because a lot of women go for dudes that they can take advantage of, and a lot of dudes go for women that remind them of their mother. So if we can change that dynamic, we can get something popping. But we got a lot of dudes that grew up in single family households. And I don't care. A lot of people won't be like, well, where's their daddy at? Well, here, ask the Obama why their daddy ain't there. How about you do that first before we talk about anything? Because I believe a lot of these women ran these men away. Because I don't know a lot of men that don't want to be in their kids' lives. But that's my, that's the square I stand on. You know, anybody try to knock me off of it. But a lot of these boys don't know how to be men. And a lot agree, of these girls agree, don't know agree. how to be women. These, these women are not raising their daughters to be women. They're in competition with them. So when they bring a young man around the house, they probably, their mama try, probably trying to fuck them too. So it's always a competition. It's never, I'm trying to give you knowledge to elevate you. I'm in competition with you. And when it comes to the boys, they coddle them motherfuckers and they don't raise them to be men. They're emotional ass creatures. That's why I say that's why a lot of these young, young men are in prison or they about to be in prison. I think that's that's solid. If you're speaking solely about our our community. Yes. Yeah, just ours. Just ours. Yeah, overwhelmingly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, just with you. ours. Uh, uh, other communities. Look, they, they here. The black here, the black community sets the tone for everything in America. And a lot of people don't understand it. You're, just, yeah, you're right. Nigga, you're right. Just, just give about 10 more years. You yeah. don't see the white folks. You don't see the white folks right behind us. Yeah, yeah, they definitely. Right, gonna be right behind us. Like, 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 you cannot deny the first man and the first woman. You cannot deny it. Everybody else follows what we do. And I understand that we had some hard times in this country, like slavery and all that with the stuff, but we are the first men and we are the first women. The world revolves around us. Well, I think we definitely you know, have my, to do my biggest rebuttal when I hear women saying men ain't shit. I turn around and I say, Well, who <laughs> raising these men? The women who, let, let's, 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 let's keep it. Let's keep let's keep it. Let's keep it very, very honest, Grace. Most most of these females, if we're gonna if we're gonna hyper focus on our community. And I mean, you even said it, and I believe the men on this panel, most of the women in our community don't couldn't handle being in a relationship or proximity to a man. They don't know how to align with that because it comes with standards. It comes with structure. It comes with expectation. If you're going to be with a man, a man, a solid, optimal man, you're going to have to grow. And most most of the women in our community are just not ready for that. They're They're mentally fatigued. They're emotionally exhausted. They don't have what's necessary to be able to maintain a relationship. So dating is the best they can do because it's a short lived thing. You know, a relationship requires a stretch. It requires levels of elevation. It requires progress at each stage. They're Absolutely. not made. They're not made that way. I can I tell you. Nice. Well, go ahead. I I'm sorry. Being nice. I, I, I think you're being nice and giving them excuses because uh, when it comes to um, getting a degree, like here, we got our black women, they're going out there when it comes to the educational field, going out there, going into different, going into different fields to try to get degrees and stuff. They abide by what they need to do. You need to be here this time. You need to write this paper on this day. And then once they get their degree, they go into their jobs. You need to be here on this day. You're going to be here for this amount of time. They fall in line when it comes to that, because it really sounds like they don't want to follow the rules. It's the discontent and the disrespect that they have for the black men that they want to be with. But well, also, I, also, let me just say this. Also, let me just chime in quick. I think, you know, a lot of these women look at the men that they choose, right? Look at the men that they choose. Like they got it. You know, most of these women they, they don't want to take responsibility for the men that they choose. You're, you're, yeah, you're proving my point. That's that's what I'm speaking to, and not to make an excuse for what Jay was saying. What I think I've learned about observing women for years, especially our women, um, relationships are the one thing that is going to mirror where you lack. Getting a degree does not do that. You can mm -hmm. pass tests. You can get the jobs. 
You can perform in a singular capacity in companies because they give you the blueprint of how to succeed. But in a relationship, it is going to require you to have to dig deep on where you're inadequate. That's the difference. And that that's why I'm saying they're not equipped for it, because if you're standing next to a man, you're in the proximity of a man. One, he's going to be very hyper aware Two, like we've all said, this is what it is. You're not going to come in here, dismantle my program. This is the program. You either are going to meet it and grow with it or you get the heck on. So I'm not making no excuses. I just recognize no. what it that's, is. That, that's why that's why they don't go for those guys. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, um, you are who you accept. These women only accept the fuck boys. So they, they fuck girls. They don't they don't get the guys, the guys that we're talking about, the guys that who's I, I, I put us on that standard where we hold ourselves to a certain standard. We do what we got to do and we make sure we handle our responsibilities and we know that we have to be a, a, a net positive for the people around us. They can't get them dudes because we already know what we're going to do with them. Smut them out, send them to the streets. <laughs> Straight up. Those women know they can't get them dudes. The women, the, the women that get with these certain type of guys, the guys that they accept, they accept who they are. But see, yeah, they, they, you know, you can't choose and see, and, and I've known women that they, they, you know, they, they want to be, I guess, as my grandmother would say, wrong and strong about it. They know the, they know the dude that they chose is fucked up and they're like, so what? I can right? change them. But but then at the same time you can't say you want a you want a good man and then you go back to the same kind of dude. It may, it may be a different face, but this is the same kind of dude, right? You know, one of my mentor, one of my investment banking mentors about twenty five years ago, one of the things he told me he was like, uh, in a conversation we was having, he was like, always re remember, your lady is an extension of you. So I learned back then that the rooms that I'm in, if I'm bringing my lady with me, she got to, you know, she got to be on point. It can't be no ratchet hood shit, right? No because if head. I'm in a room with corporate people, with major politicians and people like that, I'm not trying to have no hood chick or no ghetto chick or no chick that don't know how to act, talk, you know, and, and not even... Uh, put on a front like you need to naturally be that way you you understand so you know so so for, for those of us men uh, or I should say those of us black men that have a standard that's in those rooms then we have to have a lady that's gonna that's gonna be our extension that when we're in the room it's like okay like it, it's you know it 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 works right it makes us look good and, and when i say us us as a couple hey, hey you just say it's not a negative on you but you're on the right path of it like and the same thing applies to the men like like i hope the ladies don't think any of the ladies that's watching right now saying like oh well because he get, she got with a pookie you know she ain't shit well guess what the pookie ain't shit either <laughs> like just so you know the Pookie ain't shit either. What the Pookie, up? the Ray Ray, the Chad, the Brad, yeah. all of them, they ain't shit either. Well, like I just said, I some of them, they defend that, right? They're yeah, okay I with that. I don't, I don't and fuck they, with them. And them. they know that. I don't fuck with none of them people. Like, well, I, I'll be on, me personally, me personally, I don't fuck with none of them dudes. And I tell y'all ladies to stay the hell away from them. But the problem is a lot of ladies think they can change somebody. Well, well, a lot of ladies do what most people do at the beginning of the year. It sounds good to talk about change. So the men ain't is just talking about change. It, they they know they have no intention on growing. So yeah, it sounds good to gym. yeah, it sounds good to say oh, I'm gonna get in the gym. It sounds good to say you know when our community is good at that. You know, running your mouth, but no action to follow. If you I'm want benefits. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. That's, that's the new, that's the new, that's the new <laughs> buy-in term to make, make it seem like you're actually progressing in life, and it's like no. Yeah, you so. got to put the work in, and a lot of them don't want to put the real work in, right? They yeah. don't want to, you no, know, they don't want to put in the real, the Absolutely. the real work, because any. 
go go right ahead, Grace. Um, this um, Cortez Rob says, well, why can't both true or should i like both i love an aggressive ass woman i mean yeah, some wrong with you some, some Let, men like well, aggressive listen. men some don't uh, uh, something wrong with him no to each their own like to each their own to the, nah, we talking to the majority well, he can be in the minority y'all got well, to each to each their own everybody looking look it's not one size fits all but it's to each their own i tell him, tell him keep that shit to himself <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Cortez, I thank you for that. coming in because you're a newbie. Please like and subscribe. I, I really appreciate it. We and we take all comments and, and we appreciate all comments. Yeah, and we, then, we treat um, all comments as so Don GQ said No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> but we treat them with respect. <laughs> So, um, hold on. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, Lord. I do have a couple shorts that I want to show, but I, I don't I don't know what, you know, if, if it's going to go through. Don GQ said, I got a new aim for us to watch called Super Crooks. I know they're having their own conversation in the comment. Wally, salute to you. Thank you for coming through. I appreciate the support. Everybody, don't forget to press the like, subscribe, and share share button and if you guys have something to say don't say it in the comment section get up on the panel you don't even have to show you you don't have to cam up because i but i do have to see what you look like in the back room you know oh i don't i don't want no trolls okay even though i think trolls you know you know are good for the show so um let's see then we got wally said women can have success everywhere in life yet even just using 50 percent to add to the other 50 50 percent of what men bring and still fail damn that, that's not good that's not really good guys the girls and then and while he said facts a woman is an extension of her man and a man is an extension of that woman absolutely you represent me and i represent you and that and that's how it is and then um while he's laughing at, at jvj and then um don G G stop putting my comments on oh okay stop putting your comments on the screen Alrighty then <laughs> he was never here <laughs> but anyway let's let's continue let's continue with the um information that i have it says here first corinthians 7 do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Each man should have sexual relations with his own wife, and each woman should have relations with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise to the wife to, to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. And and again, I bring in the Bible because a lot of women love to get married at a church and want to have the church, but do the things that's required of the church of their for them. And that's why I bring that up. You can't say you want this, but you do something else. I mean, it's just it's just not fair to the women and it's fair to the men. But I have to tell you guys that after doing this research, once again, men are getting the shitty end of the stick. They really are. Marriage to men nowadays does not look good for them. What incentives? It's dwindling day by day. Mm -hmm. Marriage is dwindling day by day for men. Why would why would a man want to get married? He ain't gonna get no coochie. The woman's gonna take half. The women's gonna take their kids, you're gonna get the house, gonna have to pay alimony. What incentive does a man have to get married if us women keep behaving badly and doing fuck shit? Excuse my language, but that's what it is. How do you marry somebody, a person, a man that has fully committed to you, 
has devoted his life to you and you don't give him no ass? I mean, make that make sense for me, ladies. Make that make sense. And then the funny thing is, then you want to get mad if they step out and exercise their options. Because like True was saying, what you won't do, there's 20 other in line in his DMs willing to do it happily. Happily do it, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Willing to do it. I'm sorry. You, you, women walk around here thinking they're the shit because they have something between their legs. Do you know how many people, creatures are walking around that has the same thing that I do in between their legs? Men know that they're, men know that they're out, women are outnumbered. There's more of us than them and they have their choice. It's, we, we are the gatekeepers of sex, but men are the gatekeepers of marriage. So if you're looking to get married, first of all, man that find it, the wife find it the good thing. You already have to be wifey material, period. And after that, you have to fulfill your duties as a wife. Of course, just not gonna work. Women have to understand the psyche of a man. And with that being said, let's talk about the causes of a sexless marriage. Number one, and the number one reason is mismatched libido. It's the most common reason why they're sexless marriage. If I, if True is at a level 10 and he likes it every day, two times a day, and I'm only giving it to him twice a week, that's not gonna work for him. It's not gonna work for him. He gonna walk around with an attitude. He gonna last shout at silly shit. He's gonna walk around built up. He's going to walk around frustrated and he, and especially if he's tried to talk to the woman and explain to her and you still are not giving it up. Come on, man. Another reason why there's sexless marriages is health issues and medical conditions and medications, the side effects. And yes, that does happen, but there's no reason that you can't talk to your doctor and try to find another medication or try to do other alternative ways to deal with your health issues. I mean, there's a lot of different forms of intimacy. It doesn't have to always be intercourse. I'm going to tell you a, little, a short story. I had a coworker who they were in love. They're, they were husband and wife. They were married for years. They had three kids, but they acted like they were still in high school. And I had to ask her, what do you, what is it? What keep you guys the way y'all are? And you know what she told me? She was like, Grace, we start our day off every morning by taking a shower together. That doesn't necessarily mean we have sex, but it's our time, our moment of being together with no kids, everybody's still sleeping. We do our thing, we connect, we, we, yes, we have sex sometimes. No, we just shower and get, but it's our moment of intimacy that we look forward to every morning no questions asked even if we argue the night before we wash it away that morning and start a new day i'm like wow it doesn't necessarily have to be um taking a shower together but taking that moment of intimacy because you we all know that life gets in the way you got the kids you got the job you got the in-laws you got sports, you got, you got to take your kid to violin practice, you got to go to soccer practice. I get it. But just like we put time into all that, we have to put time into our spouses. Because at the end of the day, them raggedy ass kids are going to be leaving the house. <laughs> and we're going to be alone ju with just you and me. Okay, that's why I have those conversations. Yes, the wife sits in the front and the mom in the back. Yes, we serve the husband first and then the kids. It's all about the marriage first, because at the end of the day, the husband and the wife came first before the kids. And once you leave your parents' house and become one in flesh with that person, y'all are one. And, and we're so far from that. Like True like was talking about, it's all about hooking up now. Netflix and chill. It's not mm -hmm. relationships anymore. And if we want things to work and we want to save our kids and we want to have better 
interaction with each other. We got, the old school was working. Who, who, who said it was okay to change things? Because obviously it's not working. A lot of people accuse me of being an old head. Oh, you're too traditional. You got to keep up with the times. Well, you know what? What's going on right now, it obviously is not working. The, w- the, the women say it, that the women say it's not working. <laughs> Yeah, that's what. Oh, well, that's what of, yeah. of course, we, that's, we have that's a single changes. mother, <laughs> single mother <laughs> epidemic. You, you know, there's a lot of things we're lost in the sauce. We got a lot of kids here wandering around, wondering who their daddy is, if they even got a daddy. You know, three, four kids with three different men. Come on, lady. And this is why I advocate for men. And I always tell you guys, take your spot at the head of the table. Stop sitting in the sidelines. Excuse me. And men like True, he didn't he didn't grab that head of the table and he gonna stay there. Gary, you didn't have grabbed your head of the table. I, I you're okay with me because you're willing to compromise a little bit on certain things. Not true. He's standing on it. It's my seat. I ain't moving for nobody. You can sit on my lap once in a while, you know, but you ain't getting my seat. He he he's not playing on um, musical chairs. With, with well, no. Well, listen. I well, listen. I'm not giving up my seat either. But I mean, there's things we can agree on, right? We can have an agreement, right? Like I was saying, agreement is to me a better word than compromise. So as long as we agree on 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 whatever it is, then you know we 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 can do that. Yeah, I don't. Another yeah, reason I, for. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, true. No, go ahead. Finish that. No, I'm just. Just to chime in, and I, I I tend to say things like, um, and I've said this to women, and they get offended. But I'm like, I'm the sun, and you're the planet. Like that's how this <laughs> is. Like. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah. If you understand that, you know how to, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I got work. it. I got it. I got it. I got I'm not it. moving, sweetie. Like that's what it is. You you orbit around me. That's how it works. And but so many dudes are terrified. I like, I like that analogy. Yeah, I like that analogy. That that's a good yeah. one. Another common cause of sexless marriage is childbirth. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, there's no definite time for women to be ready for sex after childbirth, even though most health providers give four to six weeks. For me, it was 23 days after childbirth, but you know, every woman is different. Sometimes it takes longer for a woman's body to feel right again for intimacy and also having a newborn overtakes the need for physical intimacy for most women. But again, women, it's not always about you. Okay? There are going to be times where you're not going to come. It's not about you. It's about the man. Okay? You can get yours next time. Okay? We're mul- we're uh, so, well, some of us are multiple orgasmic. So when you have your four or five that night, let him have his one or two the other night. Oh, okay. You just can't be selfish with it. Another common cause for sexless marriage is stress. Excessive stress affects a person's physical, psychological health, including their sex drive. When you are stressed, the brain produces cortisol, the stress hormone, which lowers libido. Also, stress leaves one tired, anxious, and frazzled, making it even harder to desire sex. Okay, so this is where I'm going to get on y'all men. If you know she works all day and then she got to come home and take care of the kids and got to cook and got to do the dishes. There's no reason why there's some things you can't help her on to get us quicker in the bedroom to get what you want. But a lot of men are walking around here true thinking that they still got to go to work, still got to cook, clean, take care of the kids, do the homework and still satisfy the man at the end of the night. I, I, I mean, a teamwork makes the dream work. It was easier back in the days when the m- m- woman stayed at home and could do all that shit all day and then come home and tend to her husband and give her her undivided attention. If you're stressed out about Bill, if you're stressed out about family issues and arguments mentally, and I and I can say this for women and I think men, if y'all ain't mentally right, can y'all still have sex? If things are not going, yeah. <laughs> See, I guess true. I deal with older. I deal with older men, and some of them tell me no. If if things are not mentally going right, if my finances are not right, 
I can't mentally enjoy sex. I can have sex, but I want to be able to enjoy it. So I, I, stress is a big factor. Go ahead. I think what you're speaking to is is, a, is all inclusive. I, everything you're saying, I, I, I don't disagree with. I think what sometimes is jarring is that it sounds like a relationship that the man is not navigating and guiding because to your point, it should be collaborative. It shouldn't all be heavily on the woman to balance, you know, the duties, whether it's kids working combination. To me, that sounds like a man that's not leading the relationship because it's his job to structure it to benefit the thing that he benefits, intimacy, you know, touch, sex, whatever. So if she has too much on her plate, I would argue that that man is not leading that relationship. That's I, that's what I'm saying. I've never seen it. You know, I've, I've had different situations with women, you know, at one time and I've dated a woman with a child and that just was not a thing. Like I created the world to where she came in and it was a set and we talked about everything. This is how this is gonna work. This is going to, she never had a day where she was stressed out to not still be ready for me. I made sure to do that. I eliminated all of that. So it doesn't make sense to me how- But the thing is a lot of single boys grew up seeing their mama be superwoman. And now they expect the woman that they're with to be like they mama and be superwoman. And yeah, a that's... lot of these modern women, I ain't superwomen. You know, they make yeah, me that's Yeah, that's not that's unrealistic i think too that uh it's, it's it's twofold because i heard you gary touch on it i heard you say something about it too sex is there's a physical okay there's a physical aspect to sex there's an emotional aspect to sex and there's a verbal aspect to sex and what i can tell you personally what has made me i think relatively decent with women is that i'm, I'm verbal so i understand that my job is to be dominating her mind throughout her day throughout her week from my voice to, you know, inquiring about how she's feeling to what is it that you want to do? I mean, that's what I'm saying is weird to me because anytime a girl was like, you know, I want more time, what's that look like to you? I'm like, okay, so I used to create date nights. I used to carve out things in my schedule so that we could accommodate the thing that you're one saying you want as well as what I want. But if you got all of that, if the relationship is chaotic and it's sex lists and all that i can overwhelmingly tell you that man's not leading a relationship not properly and i would not i would well, agree with you because he's not complying with structure and discipline right. there's the I, there's two points i definitely want to agree with true on one um he's definitely not leading the the re relationship if he's if she's doing everything it needs to be like a, they need to work together right and he has to make things a lot easier for her so it can be beneficial for him. Um, um, and I think that that is very important. And I, in in my own experiences, you know, any good or responsible man that's dating a woman with children or a kid or two is going to want to create a world where it's going to, the, the burdens are going to be a bit easier on her like that to me and I th and with you that's common sense right that's common like um but you know um, unfortunately a, a lot of a, a lot of guys don't see that or see it that that way and then you got some women that don't even know how to accept the guy that is going to do is setting that up for her right yeah i would i would say that if a, they've never experienced it but i would say that if she's in that relationship and I was talking to a young lady about this last night. People got to be honest and realize where people's base level is. So there's a base level to everybody. If she's in that relationship, I would argue she she's okay with that. It tends to be that you align yourself with a man who's probably not adequate in most cases. He's not responsible. He ultimately needs your help in order for this thing to function. So you want that guy because that guy probably is closer in proximity of your low standard as a woman. Because if you get with, <laughs> right. <laughs> you get with a, 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 a more together guy, one, yeah. he's ultimately going to structure your chaos, but he's also going to expect things from you. And that's the part they don't want. They want the structure. They just don't want you to be able to be like, wait a minute, what, you know, you know the, the 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 standard of it. They don't want that part. They don't want the accountability part. They well, want right, the right. So. But but then but then there's also some that they're 
they're uh, they're comfortable with that chaos, right? That chaos has become normal, right? So when you yep. come and bring structure, right? Like then that they have a problem with that because they're they've been accustomed, they've been dealing with the chaos for so long, and then they want to fight with you about it and want to turn around and blame you like you're doing something wrong. You're right. You're right. Another cause of sexless marriage, trauma. If mm -hmm. your spouse has some unresolved sexual trauma experience from her past, that can have lasting implications for your married sex life. Sexual trauma makes the brain associate physical intimacy with fear, manipulation, force, shame, affecting how the body responds to intimacy. And let me tell you how I feel about this. Yes, this is absolutely correct. But is it your responsibility true? Is it Gary's responsibility to unpack this trauma for this woman? She should get therapy. She should go to counseling. This trauma should have been talked before you got married. Absolutely. Don't tell me all your trauma one year into the marriage and now expect me to deal with your trauma. People know they got trauma. People know, so a lot of people know they fucked up. A lot of people know they need to go to therapy, but because it's so taboo in our culture, no, you don't need to go to nobody. Just don't tell nobody in the family. We like to put shit underneath the rug and not talk about things. And that's why it keeps going a vicious cycle, generation after generation after generation. And that's why it's so important. I don't know why we stop having premarital counseling. That is imperative before a couple gets married. Just like you take all this time. It took me a year to plan my wedding from every detail. That same energy that I took to plan my wedding is the same energy that people should take and go to counseling before going before getting married. You want to go into this with all hands clean, heart pure, everything good. You know, not worried about, oh my God, is he going to find this out later? Is he? And then I'm putting my happiness in the hands of truth. He's responsible for unpacking my shit. No, he can help me fold it and put it away, but it's not his responsibility. It's not y'all responsibility. It's nobody's responsibility, but our responsibility for our happiness and to unpack our trauma. And that's why therapy is good. Talking like this, having the hard conversations. This could be therapy for somebody right now and not having to pay a co-payment and listening to things that they've never heard before and be like, yeah, you know, maybe I need to go get some help. Maybe I do need to talk to somebody because the causes of stress that I, I'm talking to you about right now is written by a man who runs men's support groups. And he purposely has support groups for men who are in sexless marriages. Gary, I thought about you when I wrote this down last night. The number six cause of sexless marriage is failed communication. <laughs> when, you have, when you have a lot of relationship problems, maintaining a healthy relationship becomes difficult. Some contributing factors to sexual desire from your partner include infidelity, masturbation, addiction, passive aggressive behavior, unresolved relationship issues, and negative feelings. There is a lot of misinformation about sex, and it often leads to people to develop unhealthy relationships with the act of romantic relationships. For instance, a lot of people think that sex should happen spon spontaneously, and most couples wait for it, but then it never happens. It's important to communicate your sexual needs with your partner. It's okay to plan a sex date. It's okay. You know, I, I saw a short that said the seven, the seven, seven rule. You should go on a date every seven days. You should go on a weekend trip every seven months. You should re re renew your every seven years. You know, there's a pattern here. You've got, again, you got to put it. A marriage is constant work. It's every day. It's every day from the minute you wake up, from the minute you lay down. 
you are actively putting work into your marriage. Just like a lot of people go to work nine to five, sometimes bring that work at home. It's the same thing with a marriage. It's no different. It is no different. And you're going to be funny about, you're going to laugh about this. Neglected hygiene is another reason mm -hmm. for sexless marriage. A lot of people stop doing the things that they used to do to get that person. It's not shameful to talk about hygiene problems. Ignoring the problem can lead to even more dilemma in the, in the future. And I can't believe that I have to actually say this. Grown ass people, what it says here, brush your teeth. Keep yourself up, wash your ass. Both women, keep your privates clean. You, you, you know, my mother always told me, always make sure you're clean. Keep yourself up, your hair, your makeup, and your nails. Men are visual creatures. They don't want to come home and see your punk ass in a bonnet and, and big ass sweatpants. You, you know, exactly. Come on, ladies. Exactly. Come on. Come on. They're around corporate people all day and stuffed in a suit. You know, they want to come home to you in boy shorts, frying up some chicken and making some cornbread and him watching ESPN and drinking a cold beer. I mean, again, men are not that complicated, guys. I, they're not that complicated. They're really not. We're the ones, women, people, humans are the ones that complicate shit. If you know what your man likes and he's telling, if he's giving you the playbook, why would you not run the plays? He giving you the playbook and what are you doing? Putting the playbook in the locker and locking it up? Say, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want to do. You cooking, okay. Grace. He, you cooking. He go, <laughs> he's going to give the back, he's going to give the backup playbook to the other chick and the other chick going to run the plays. And you're going to be sitting at home with a dog and die alone. We'll see. Let me, if I could chime in real quick. Go uh, ahead. Uh, um, to circle back a little bit on the trauma, there's some women that feel that once they're married, and I even heard this in a regular relationship, well, oh, uh, this is what I'm dealing, you know, you're just going to have to deal, deal with it. Like, that's some bullshit, right? Like, you have to be able to unpack your trauma. Now, there's some men that wouldn't have a problem helping you unpack your trauma. But, you know, again, it has to be a collaborative effort, but some, they just want to do their own thing and feel that once they're married, then, oh, well, you're just going to have to deal with it and I don't got to, and, and I don't have to work on it. Do um, shit. The other, right, then, then, the, then the like other, that. right, ex exactly. Then the other point is, uh, and, and actually I had a woman couple months ago tried to tell me that and I'm like nah I'm not dealing with you I gotta deal with it fuck that like you out of your mind right bye um, I'm yeah I gotta deal with no nah, like I you know when you're willing enough to listen I'll help you get through it and then you want to tell me that I gotta after some time you gotta tell me that I gotta deal with it man fuck that you nah so um the other thing is that I think with the with with your lady you know i feel and in my experience you want to get a, a woman that's going to enjoy doing these things for you right she's going to want to she's she's going to like to keep herself up you know her the nails the hair uh dress how you like her to dress you know all of that shit like she has to like she has to like to like to do that and want to do that for you now if you now if she's not doing that, then there's a problem. Like you have to be able, and I think Chu and I touched on this earlier, you gotta get in our head first, right? You gotta get in our head first so you can get her to the place where she can do those things, right? You know, I had a woman, I was dating a couple of years ago, every morning she would, when she would dress to go to work cause she was on a corporate end, she was like, you know, I pick up, I go in my closet and I pick up, I'm like, wow, I know Gary would like me wearing this. Right. And she had the corporate classy, classy look. So I'm just saying, like for men, you got to get in her head. Right. And you got to know how to have the conversations with her and 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 make her feel, you know, make her feel wanted. And she can be because there's some some women that would feel that, oh, like they don't know if they could be sexy or feel sexy. 
Well, you have to talk to her and get her to feel that way, right? And, you know, some of these guys don't understand that. They expect it, oh, well, it just happened overnight. Like, you ever heard uh, uh, stories where there is one woman, she would be with guy A and guy A just treats her certain way. Then she goes to guy B and guy B gets her to do all the crazy, all the crazy shit. And then guy A is like, wait a minute. How come you doing all of that for him? You didn't do all of that for me. Let, me. let me give you the reason why. You guys agree. Tell me what you think about this comment. If you want, if you want an angel, you got to create a heaven for her. Okay, if you want a slut and a whore in the sheets, you got to create that comfortability for her. You got to make her feel like it's okay. No judgment. You know, a lot of men say they want that, but then turn around and judge you and bring that up in your face. And I get it because I saw a short the other day where the wife, when she went to the gym, she dressed hot. When she was going out with the girl, she looked good. When she was going to work, she dressed nice. And the wife complained, well, why is it that I don't get what everybody else gets? I get the big baggy shorts and the bonnet and the scarf. Why can't you get dressed up for me? That's the main person you should get dressed up for is your man. Especially if he's doing what he's supposed to do, providing, protecting, professing, making sure you're straight, making sure you're kids are straight what is the big deal what is the big deal i mean the fact that i have to sit here and tell people to brush their teeth and keep yourself <laughs> up and your private yeah. parts clean is crazy it's crazy and of course no full for play with one's body fresh in men causes causes for sex but these are things that can be workable these are things that can be workable. We all know that we are going to go through menopause. So we got to be able to work through that. Learn about it. What can you do? You know, nice things. You know, you got to prepare for things because we all know that our bodies go through changes. Things are not going to happen because at the end of the day, when your shit ain't working, my shit ain't working, all we got is each other and conversation and lemonade sitting on the front porch. You know, I'm gonna put <laughs> your teeth away at night. You're gonna put my cane up and, and we still gotta be able to deal with each other. But, but the thing is in this world that we live in, we have so many options that we're so quick to trade it in, to, to trade one in. What do you guys have to say about that? I think, I think there's an illusion that people think they really have options, sexual options, sure. But I would, I would, I would argue that most men especially men because women they have a gambit of sexual options but relationship options no uh, and then the same goes for men because it's opposing women have a ton of sexual options men don't have that same option overwhelmingly um it's very very different very rare that you can develop yourself so much where you can kind of command that attention repetitive repetitively from the female you know population as a man um so options what, what I've seen happen is that people are driven by attention now and and and, the, and that's where the validation mm -hmm. sometimes is hard which 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 speaks volumes to what men don't understand about women the reason why they don't get that attention from that woman dressing and doing all those things is because women I've actually had this happen over the years she does it to to get a response from you now what's interesting is that the response and i have to train you know the women i used to be with that my response is not based on your time frame it's based on my time frame so i would overwhelmingly take my girl out on a friday she'd be bad looking good i would never say nothing i will wait usually till about monday we'd be chilling and i look over you know i kiss her on the cheek i was like you look really really good the other night and she would like lose her crap but she would be like why didn't you say something when it, you know i was there and I used to have to explain to them, like, look, I, I, I sometimes it's going to be immediate, but sometimes it's I'm going to linger on it. I want you to know that I'm paying attention. I want you to know I'm acknowledging it. And that was tailored for me. Some guys are going to be immediate with it, like baby girl, boom, whatever. I was more of the, OK, let me digest it, appreciate it. It was taking you out and I'm going to verbalize it. And it took them to adjust because mm -hmm. there is a um, expectation of. Well, if I did all of this, I need you to validate it. 
I need you to tell me I did a good job right now in the moment. That's case by case. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of training and understanding each other's temperaments and all of those things. Because what I wanted her to understand, whoever she was at the time, was that I'm, I see you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not ignoring it. But it's definitely not when you think I should. That's not how this works. Not going to jump when you think I'm supposed to. It just doesn't work that way. And, yeah. you know, but but you have to, as men, you have to speak to that. You have to, because it's an encouragement. When a woman knows she did a good job, they tend to continue to do a good job. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's Words right. of affirmation. That's, That's a lot right. of people's love language. Yeah. Words of affirmation, you, you know, and, and for women, that's a big one. You know, we want to know that we, babe, that food was awesome. I need you to put that in that every week rotation. You know, that'll give her motivation to cook more, you know, and be honest. If she makes something and you didn't like it, tell her. And she gonna get mad about that or get in her feelings about it, then fuck it. it you rather me make, let you cook something all day, waste food, and I don't like it? Said, babe, I, this is not really my thing, but that spaghetti and chicken you made the other night, yeah, that's fine. You, you know, there's there's way to do things, but again, people are so sensitive nowadays that you tell them one thing and they blow it out of proportion and then men shut down. You say, fuck it, I ain't gonna say anything anymore. I'm just, just gonna eat before I come home. <laughs> you, you know, and then I don't have to deal with it because men are, men, are problem fixers. They're not going to drag shit out. They're not going to continue to go through this shit over and over again. If you're still going to cook shitty and not listen to what I like to eat, I'm just going to eat. I'm going to go to my mama's house and eat before I come to your house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, and then they're going to get mad anyway. Well, why did you eat? You know I cooked all day because I don't like what the fuck you cook. I've been trying to tell you, but you don't want to listen. So I got to do <laughs> what I got to do. I mean, that's where the miscommunications happen. And did you guys know that 50% of marriages are because of sexless marriages and lack of intimacy? 50%. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I mean, a lot of people automatically think it's about money, and it is. But sometimes, too, you may not have money, but if that sex is off the chain, you, you know, you're going to think with clarity and be good and come up with solutions to fix those money problems. But you can't Absolutely. be walking around all heavy and, you know, um, loaded and still have money problems and think that things are going to be OK. I mean, something's got to give. You can't have everything suffering, you, you know, in the aspect of your marriage or relationships. Uh, and um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think you too have to be very, very in touch with yourself as far as the love you truly have for yourself. Like it's impossible to have any of this exchange properly if each party is in, in a deficit. You know, a man has to be in love with himself and who he is and know who, who he, what he stands for and vice versa. Because a lot of this stuff, again, that's why when I hear it, I'm like, really, this is complicated. But mm -hmm. I think if you're in relationships where there's two parties who are... Um, void of, of, of esteem and confidence individually you're going to have a lot of conflict because you're always going to be looking yeah you're always going to be looking for the other party to fill in the gap and that's just that's improper it's not going to work regardless so well you can't have two i don't know for lack of a better word two toxic people getting into a relationship right because that's a recipe for serious disaster right but those two toxic people that's what they're accustomed to right so that seems normal when it really isn't. You're right. And this is, I think, one of the most important aspects of this show that I want to put out there. Women, let me tell you what is happening to your husbands when he's not getting sex from you. Y'all think it's a fucking game. Y'all think it's cute and it's a control thing. But let me tell you, wife, the, the woman, for you not to give sex to the something that he professed love to, the effects are detrimental. Negative feelings, loneliness, resentment, frustration, guilt, rejection, him feeling inadequate. Negative feelings and pressure around sex are triggering 
a sexual avoidance cycle. He's going to become less open and connected to you. He's going to be less of a goodwill and kinder to you. He's going to be less patient. He's going to lash out at you. He's going to lash out at the kids. He's going to lash out at the dog. I I, I mean, everybody going to get the brunt of it. The man needs to come, ladies. Okay? Jesus. <laughs> it's not that, you know, it's not rocket scientists. And again, now we're talking, this is what happens to your body when you're not having sex. A higher risk of heart disease. You get more stressed. Um, slower brain growth. You get sick more often. Your immune system starts to decline. It's harder to get an erection when you don't practice getting an erection. Um, a higher risk of prostate cancer. Because the only thing that can lower your risk of having prostate cancer is through ejaculation. Ladies, listen to what I'm saying. Embrace <laughs> this. This No, I, I mean, this literally has detrimental physical and mental issues on a man y'all think it's funny and it's cute to cut a man off but don't don't think don't get mad when he goes and gets it from sheila the neighbor down the street because you ain't giving it to him because it, um they'll be it'll be harder to get them stimulated and less lubrication i mean the, ladies when a man is rejected by the partner that he chose to marry and be and commit to and is rejected for days, weeks, and even years, years. It takes a toll, a significant toll on his self-esteem and emotional well-being. Bearing, being. It throws them off not only physically, but also emotionally. Ladies, this is not a joke. This is not cute. And don't sit there and cry to your best friend, to your single friend. Oh, that nigga ain't shit. But you knew what you didn't do in the marriage. Love and sex go hand in hand in marriage and are equally important to stay in the bonds of marriage. And I'm telling you, he's going to start feeling less emotional, attached to you. He's going to start to drift apart, less indulgent in any activities with the chores, helping with the kids, bonding. All he's going to do is come home, go in the living room, drink beer, watch his game, and then go to bed not even pay attention to you. Why? Because he's walking around frustrated and backed up like a motherfucker. And the thing oh. is, guys, women actually think that men don't need intimacy. I Just know. like us women, know. men need love. They need warm closeness, validation, and acceptance. Men are by nature more physical due to a higher level of testosterone. And they express these needs by emotional closeness by doing things side by side with their wives. The, the average appears to be a few times a week. There is no right amount of sex that men need, but one constant thing is his emotional need to feel that you still desire him. He needs to know that. He needs to feel that. I'm giving y'all game right now, ladies. Embrace this shit. Because yeah. if you want to get married and you want to stay married, you got to give up the pussy. I'm sorry. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. How the fuck are you going to work all these years to try to get a husband and then you finally get a husband and you don't give it up? Oh, yeah, and I, yeah, this is sense. the things that I've heard of women. Oh, I don't want him stretching my shit out. Oh, I can't have <laughs> sex every night. Girl, do your kegels and call it a day. Go do some yoga. You know what I'm saying? Even me and, you know, choppy girl like me, I know better. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able to keep yourself up. But um, that's, it's that's serious, man's, guys. That's men's fault. That's it's gotta be men's fault. <laughs> this, y'all said it earlier. It gotta be men's fault because it's just. But you're saying it's men's fault because you allow it. How do you allow three years without having, without having sex? And, um, a, lot, and a lot of them won't even cheat. That's what I'm saying. Is, that's that's uh, men's fault. Go ahead, Gary. I think that you know. Um, I think part of that problem, or one of the problems is some of these women in their younger years, they want the bad boy, right? And more times than not, the bad boy is not gonna tolerate that. But when they get to a certain, but when the women get to a certain age, they wanna settle down. And they wanna, I guess, pick the husband, the husband is the, 
I don't want to say beta male, but you know, he's not as alpha or not as bad. So, and sometimes those guys, they're not going to put their foot down, right? They're not going to, you know, uh, um, be up front or be, you know, or, or even hold their wife ac accountable and, and address these situations because it's beyond me that just to even enter into a marriage and that happen, that, no, like, so when I hear and even read about stuff where these guys have gone months and years without, like, how the fuck does that, how do you let that happen, right? So, um, yeah, so I, I think that- A lot of that, them say think, for the kids. But still, but still, like, I think I think that's an, in my opinion, that's an excuse. Because uh, you could develop co a co-parenting situation with your wife, right, or, you know, y'all could get separated and you develop a co-parenting situation there, but, you know, to lay in bed every night for, I don't know, six months, a year, or even a couple of years, and not have no type of real sexual intimacy with you, what? no, hell no. Like, you're gonna, you, you're gonna be miserable. You're gonna, like, yeah, it just, it just that's doesn't me. work. But I that's think that, well. but ahead. as, Another but thing as I was saying, gentlemen, for the ladies, for the ladies, y'all gotta let these ladies know. If you like head, you better let them know you like head and that's a requirement. And if they don't know how to do it, how you like it, you better watch some pornos with them or whatever, because that's important. If that's important to you and that's a part of sex for you and, and that's a requirement, you gotta let that be known. Because I know a lot of women are running cute talking about they don't do that. And most men ain't gonna stick around. If you but that's that. part of the conversation in the beginning. Like, what do you like? What, what do you don't like? Like, if 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 I'm getting into a <laughs> if I'm getting into a relationship with a woman and we're in the talking stage, if you will, and we have, I guess, a general sex conversation of what you're into and what you're not into, and if I hear things that, or if I say things that here's what I'm into and here's what I like. And she may say, oh, I don't like that or I don't do that. Or if she says things, what she doesn't do, I'm like, okay, well, I know that I'm not gonna, she's not the one for me, right? She's like, I think in my opinion, it's simple as that. Look, man, it, it, it yeah, it, 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 it's, go ahead, go ahead, Grace. No, no, I just wanna say that when a man like you, True or Gary, voice what they like, and the woman says, well, I don't do that. And then you guys turn around and say, okay, well, peace. They want to get offended and they want to get upset. Let them get offended and upset. Absolutely, and let them get offended, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of dudes don't have a response to women's behavior. That's what I've over, that's why I say this is again, is very, it boggles my mind because even something like head, for example, that's standard procedure. She got to spit 16 balls in the mic. Like, what do you mean? That's not I'm a conversation. Procedure. Yeah, we're yeah, not, yeah. One mic. We're not talking like I don't. I don't get it. Like it's, it's. But I think again, and it's, and it's hard. Cause I'm trying to like imagine. Cause I do remember this one girl years ago. Um, you know, it was a little, just a little casual situation, and you know, we were hanging out. I used to go over, you know, do grown up things. But she, she didn't give heads. I remember after the third time I went over there. I was like, check this out. I'm like, yo, are you scared of the are you scared of the penis to mouth the situation? Like, what's going on? You know, I addressed it. And she clearly, without batting an eye, was like, Well, I'm totally comfortable with giving you the ass, but I want to reserve that for my husband. So I said, slow down. So in your logical mind, you think reserving your mouth for your husband is going to be the prize when the ass is being given away. Right now, that makes no sense, sweetie. Like, no <laughs> sense. And she like thought about it. She's like, well, I want to be able to tell him that I didn't do this. I said, what? But you've already messed up. Like you've already crossed, <laughs> like, you know, this threshold. You're so, crossing the street halfway. You, 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 you're <laughs> like, halfway. What are you going to say on the medium? But I think a lot of see, most and I know this to be true because there was guys that even seen the girl and they were like, you said what? Like, what does she get mad? I, said, I don't care if she get mad. Like, it didn't matter to me. Like, it's 
I, I didn't care. I cared that she didn't do that. I wanted to know though. I was curious. I didn't just let it linger. I was like, oh, it's interesting. I noticed this after the third time and I brought it up. And I was prepared for her to be like, well, if you don't like it, you know, it is what it is because she she was never going to stop the flow. You know, we were enjoying each other. But a lot of guys, I think, overwhelmingly don't have a response. That's why this is, again, is a foreign thing to me because what I've noticed is that, like I think you said it, Grace, women know what type of dude you are. Like, they know. Like, it's not a girl I've ever gotten to know and start dating or hanging out with. I'm talking, uh, like, couple conversations. They're like, so how many hoes you got? And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Like, why do, <laughs> why do you already assume? But it's, it, they know. They know. And it I don't creates, ask like that. The way I ask, true, is like, so how deep is your rotation? How many hoes I got to knock out the way to get to the number It's the, the, it's the same spot. thing. You're saying, yeah, it's the same thing. But I can tell you a lot of guys have never even had that be asked. Like, they girls don't ask them that. And that's that's concerning. That tells you where you're at. That tells mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. If they're not I mean, asking. Especially, especially if the guy's good looking. Mm. He's got a good job, nice car, his own place. What would make a woman think that she's the only one? I, I, I mean, that's very self-entitled and self-absorbed mindset to think that. Now, you can become the only chick he's with, but you're going to have to work your way. First of all, you got to try out for the team, okay? Try out for the then team. Now we, <laughs> we, we got to figure what position you're going to play on the team. Okay, and then we gotta figure out if you're gonna sit the bench or you're gonna be on the starting squad. And I know what? this because you, you, you know this is this is how I operate. <laughs> you, you know, and where did I learn this from? Y'all men, you know what I'm saying? It is yeah. what it, I can't do everything that y'all men do, but the mindset and vetting you guys can be the same way. But that's you know, why I say it's men, that's why I say it's men's fault because it, it requires you to understand that like to understand I get to control my my access and the vetting and all of that. A lot of dudes are so desperate for the for the butt that they just they just throw all. And if you don't create an environment where a woman feels like she has to earn everything, compliments, time, access, if she, you haven't created that environment, you're gonna have a sexless relationship. If she understands. Well, to me, that's a turn on because it's a challenge now. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get his attention. You know, like necessary. I purposely do things on dates that I know no other woman has done for that man. Like if yeah. the drink comes and the straw is on the table, I'm picking your straw and I'm putting it in your drink. You know, if the bread comes, I'll ask permission first because some men are funny. I said, do you mind if I butter your bread? And I will butter the bread and put it on his dish. I know this is shit that women ain't doing for their men, especially on a first date. But I'm doing it to let you know what kind of woman I am, that I'm there. I'm going to think what you need before you even think about it yourself. You, you, you know, and that's how women should be. I saw a short um, today where, well, no, it was actually someone on the panel, on the Lapeef channel, and shout out to them. The guy said, my wife saw that I was stressed out. I was on the road for too many days straight. She booked the room and booked and packed my bag and told me to meet her at the hotel at the spa. And she was like, the fact that she need, knew that I needed that, that I was stressed out and she was emotionally in tune with me, that is everything to me. And I took the day off. I got my massage. I got me some loving ate good and was ready to get back on the road how many women do that for how many women would do that for men you, you, you know they do again many love okay. too what do you they mean just, do? they do if if you're that dude <laughs> like they do that's why i mean like yo you got it's it's it, it baffles my mind like girls girls are competitive yeah, but the competition sometimes is between you and her so if she values what she assumes your life is like or even can verify your life is like you have to create that competition you can live without her you she has to understand that so all those things are to gain attention gain validation gain your respect and then keep it 
But if you make it easy, like it's just like I've t- I've told girls we not going out because they showed up at my house with sneakers on, and I'm like, where do you think you're Epic going? Fail. Like, and she's like, we're going out. I said, you're not going out with me like that. You can come exactly. over to this house and we can hang out. And but most dudes would be maybe annoyed and still follow through. I'm not taking you yeah, out on the town. Say anything. Yeah, I'm not me. Nope. We can sit in here and order a pizza and hang out. I'm not going out with you like that. Or we can swing by your house, grab some heels, whatever, and continue the evening. But if you have no response, you're always going to get, because women, that's why I say they, they, they watch you. They try to find the lowest barrier to entry. The lowest <laughs> wow. Whatever that is. Yo. <laughs> and if you let them live there, they'll stay there. Like, uh. Out the box mac and cheese is adequate. She's never, ever, ever gonna make you the homemade stuff. Like, just saying. And, and you're absolutely right. I tried one. I was young. I was only 19. I made mashed potatoes out of a bag. You know what he told me? He said, if you're gonna make mashed potatoes out of a bag, don't ever make mashed potatoes. So I knew right then and then that my ass, I got a mixer. I got real potatoes, sour cream, butter, salt. I, I mean, come on. If you want to keep the guy that you're with, you got to do the things to keep him happy and do the things you're with. It, it, it's, it's crazy. And, and vice versa, ladies. I'm not just pounding on y'all. It's vice versa. Like, if I meet a guy that likes to go fishing, I don't like going fishing. I think it's boring to me. But you know what? If that's what he likes to do, I'm going to wake up early in the the morning, gotta go have breakfast. I'm gonna get a cooler of beer, grab me a little J, and we're, we're gonna go fishing. And I'm gonna sit my ass down on that pier because I, that's what he likes. Because I know in a couple weeks I want to go to that Yankees game, and he don't like baseball. But you you gonna have to go to that baseball game with me. So again, that's where the compromise comes in. If, if you like to go fishing and you want me to go fishing with you, I'm gonna go because that's my duty as your woman. But now you know when my Yankees are in town, true, Gary, we're going to get some tickets and mm-hmm. we're going to go to the game and we're going to sit and you're going to sit there and you're going to cheer and you're going to have fun with me because that's what I like to do. But a lot of us get lost into each other that we forget who we are. And that's that's the one of the biggest mistakes that you can do in a relationship. If you know that I'm a sports chick and I let you know that at the beginning, I will travel to go to games. I would go to Tampa to watch my Yankees. I would fly. I've flown to New York to see the Yankees play. You got to understand that. That's who I am. So either you're going to accept it or you're going to reject it. And I'm always going to invite you because you're my man. You're always going to get the first invite. Hey, babe, I got tickets to the grand opening game. I needed to see my Yankees get their rings in 2009. So I flew to New York. A $25 ticket cost me $250 a ticket. But I went. Now, if you don't want to go and you think it's too expensive, stay your ass home, have the weekend to yourself, hang out with your boys, but I'm going. I'm going with my girls and we're going to the game. But again, it's a matter of compromise. Now, if I'm asking true, I want to buy a Mercedes and know that we only got a Corolla budget, that's when Drew and Gary are going to put their foot down. <laughs> you know, no, no, Grace, we're not getting that Mercedes. Our budget doesn't allow it. We're going to get the Corolla for now, or we're going to work towards our way. See, that's where I, I see, true where you're going, where the important decisions, the detrimental decisions to the relationship is where you're going to stand strong on. And I respect you for that, because that is the definition of a man. You're running, you're running shit. You're the head of household. If you cut the head off the snake, the snake is lost. You know what I'm saying? But guys, we are running two, two and a half hours. So mm-hmm. I am going to ask Gary for your final thoughts. I know it was a lot of information, but it's important to put it out there because you can't get expect to get married and put and not put out. It's just unrealistic. And then don't get mad if you get cheated on because you wasn't doing your wifely duties. Final thoughts and what and where can we find you? Well, um, my final thoughts, listen, it's as I always say, and you hear me say this every week, communication, right? You got to communicate. You really have to communicate with each other uh, before you even get into marriage and getting into 
uh, uh, an engagement and stuff like that. You really have to communicate with each other and see where each other's at. What are your likes? What are your dis dislikes? What you can, what y'all agree on, and it makes things flow a lot easier. Um, so you always, and even when you get into the marriage, you always have to keep communicating, right? Keep understanding each each, each other, so it never gets to a point where you get to be uh, or get in a sexless marriage. You want to nip it in the bud before it even starts. Um, you can catch me on The Real Discussion every Fridays from 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the, find us on The Real Discussion on, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook. You could also uh, find Boardwalk Global Media on Facebook and Instagram. And you could also find Boardwalk Global Media on YouTube. That's it. And thank you, Grace, again you for having me here. And I appreciate it. I, I enjoy being Absolutely. on the panel. And definitely, you know, big shout out to, to True. You know, he definitely, definitely on, on point. Absolutely. Okay, True, your final thoughts on sexless marriage. And just reiterate where we can find you because you'll be dropping True Gems on the table. Um, no, thank you for having me. Uh, I would just encourage men to really focus on the type of relationship they want to create and have exist prior to the woman showing up. I think that men have to be honest and understand that the things that we want are extremely important, but you got to keep in mind that it's your job to create an environment that you're most proud of. Um, it's not going to be tailor made for every woman, you know, uh, but you got to make it consistent to where when she does show up, you created a life that is envious, that is admirable, that is respectable, and she wants to be a part of. If that is what you're doing, I don't see why sex would not be an ongoing thing because women overwhelmingly translate things like sex, attention, and affection while they're enjoying themselves. So if you're not getting sex on a regular, something's void of that relationship, my guy. And I would encourage you to focus on that. Um, thank you for having me. You guys can find me on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, same true table. Uh, thanks for having me. Respect. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Can a marriage survive a sexless marriage? The short answer is yes, gentlemen but it can come at a cost. If a partner desires sex, but the other is uninterested, the lack of sex can be decreased, decreased intimacy and connection feelings of resentment and infidelity. So with that being said, and I know that I sound like a, ro a broken record, but communication about sex in a relationship still seems to be taboo topic and it shouldn't be. That should be a number one conversation. Why wait until one or both partners are highly frustrated and do other things to fulfill those needs? Willingness to listen and accommodate each other is what will make the difference of saving your sexless marriage. So guys, ladies, less nagging, more gagging, have fun, have lots of sex, because life is too short. <laughs> life is too short. And if you don't, the next one will. So embrace that. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. See you next Monday. Take care. Yeah.